morning to anyone who is watching us uh, online. And as we start today, I just want to make a few announcements just to let you, remind you that one, we don't have the holy water because to protect people from germs. We also have removed the few missiles uh, because of just the different hands that will be touching them throughout the days and weeks. It's hard to sanitize those as well. So we want to make sure we are doing everything we can to uh, kind of disperse this uh, coronavirus from touching those whom we love. And, and so to be cognizant of, we may not necessarily feel the symptoms, but it doesn't mean that we may not be a carrier. And so we want to make sure that those around us are protected, especially our loved ones at home. And so to know of our prayers. Because of that then too, um, we will just only sing the mass parts. I will enter from this side and we will uh, have our lector read the entrance as a The one thing though I, I have heard is that it is not possible to get the coronavirus in the confession. So Father Matt is still there. <laughs> so you are able to go uh, to receive that sacrament and to be healed of his great love for us. So um, do know though in all seriousness, my prayers for you, Father Matt's prayers, and that if anything we can do to help serve you in this time of need, please know that we are here for you. Good morning. Welcome to Blessed Sacrament Catholic Church. Thank you for joining our community in offering the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Today, we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent, this Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Anne Patton. May we pause in brief silence to prepare to offer our hearts, minds, and prayers to God through the sacrifice of the Mass. Please stand for the entrance antiphon. My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues my feet from the snare. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. prayer and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever 
leave, make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand, as you go, the staff with which you struck the, the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Mirabah, because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. <clears throat> Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. <clears throat> come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts, as at Mirabah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where our, your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If in today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. reading of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand. We boast in hope of the glory of God. And he does not disappoint because the love of God is poured into our hearts and through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, it is only with difficulty one dies for a just person. Though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to live, to die. But God proves his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, King of endless glory. Lord, you are truly the Savior of the world. Give me living water that I may never thirst again. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. The woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, 
for a drink. For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to him, If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to him, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may not be thirsty, or have to, ki have to keep coming here to draw water. <coughs> Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are right in saying, I do not have a husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming. When you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand, because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman, but still no one said, what are you looking for? Or, why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me, and to finish his work. Do you not say, In four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work, and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified, he told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word, and they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves and we know that this is truly 
the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, my brothers and sisters, as we continue in our season of Lent, we see how God is just desiring to encounter our hearts, especially within this gospel, and how important it is for us to be aware of Jesus wanting to bestow upon us his abundant grace, that living water that he wants to well up inside of us. You see, we're aware of Jesus, especially when we come to Mass. We're aware of him when we enter into adoration, or maybe the reading of the scriptures. We become aware when we pray the rosary, or any other type of devotion or prayer, that we're more attuned to knowing that Jesus is right there to converse with us and we with him. But the thing is, God wants to converse with us always. He wants to encounter our hearts at every moment. Yes, in prayer here at Mass and so forth, but also in our work, in our families, even in the most mundane chore that we hear in this Gospel. The Samaritan woman was only going to get water, a daily chore she had to do. And it was right there that Jesus was present, seeking to show forth his great love and the abundant grace he wants to pour into her. And it's amazing this encounter then, because she slowly comes aware of who she's speaking with. You see, at the beginning, she didn't even know. She arrives there at the well, and the only thing that she identifies Jesus is you're a Jew. We have nothing in common. It's almost as if, you know, if you were to go to a place and you see this person standing right there and you're thinking, please don't talk to me. So you get right there on your iPhone and you just start texting things. Just almost as if a way to avoid it because you don't want to be aware. But you see, Jesus doesn't let that bother him. When she simply says, hey, you're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. We have nothing in common. Let me just get my water and move on. No, Jesus wants to touch your heart, just like he wants to touch our hearts. And so he speaks to her and simply says, if you had known the gift of God, you would ask him for a drink. Because I can give you living water. I can give you something beyond what you even desire right now. The Samaritan woman now becomes a little bit more aware because it's the way she addresses him now. She no longer sees him as a Jew. She looks at him and says, Sir, almost as a way of, endear of endearment, as a way of seeing that he's this kind man now. Give me this water so I don't have to come here anymore. I ask for your help because Coming at noon is like the worst time to go. And she only goes at noon because of her sins. You know, typically they would go get water either early in the morning or in the evening. That way the water would be enough for the whole day or to carry over into the next. But you also because it's cooler then. You don't have to worry about the heat. But the thing is, is she doesn't want to be around anyone. She would rather go at noon in the heat of the day than to have to face anyone else. But yet Jesus wants to come and encounter her at that moment. She wants to free her from this. And that's why he says, you know, I want to give you this living water. And he reveals to her her sins. Those infidelities of marriage. Not as a way to condemn her, but as a way to remove that so that that is no longer 
blocking her from receiving the great gift of God's love. The grace he wants to pour into her. In a way, she is making a confession right now. And because of that, she comes to a now a deeper awareness of this encounter. She no longer calls him sir, but a prophet. You see, deep there in her heart, Jesus is growing. He's becoming more present. And thus, then, that leads into the understanding of worship, to become aware of Jesus, to be able to receive him more and more. Jesus says, you know, there will be a time, and it is now here, where everyone will worship in spirit and in truth. That is the coming of the Holy Spirit, and in the truth of Jesus' sacrifice upon the cross that we celebrate here at Mass. And my brothers and sisters, it's at that moment she realizes the Christ will tell us everything. The Messiah will come. And Jesus looks at her with a smile and says, I am he. who is speaking with you. I can only imagine in that moment that as Jesus says that to this woman, there becomes a smile upon her face, a deeper awareness, and as if the floodgates of her heart and soul are now opened to receive every gift that God wants to pour into her, she experiences the joy of knowing that, wow, I have been speaking to Jesus. I have been present with him. The one who is to come and to save us, to save me. So it's no wonder that she gets up at that moment and she runs back to the town. She forgets why she even came there. There is no longer the water jug that she is carrying. She leaves it back because she wants to get back to the people as quickly as possible. She wants to share her joy. And thus we know she has a genuine conversion. Because a true conversion wants to share the encounter of Jesus with others. Wants to share what's welling up inside that just starts overflowing with great joy. My brothers and sisters, then, we see in her, then, like the apostles. What happens when Peter and James and John and Andrew, they encounter Jesus that first time? They left everything. They left their nets. They left their boat so that they can go and encounter Jesus in a deeper way and to share that encounter with others. The Samaritan woman does the same thing. And thus, what happens is that the town comes out to meet Jesus. And he stays there two days. And they begin to believe in him. And they simply state, we know that this is truly the savior of the world. How amazing this encounter. No longer seen as a Jew or sir or a prophet but seen as he truly is through this encounter, as the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the Messiah. May we then seek to have this deep encounter also with the Lord. May we experience the joy of being filled with his grace, with his love, and from that joy, share that with those around us. Praise be Jesus Christ through his mother Mary, now and forever. Amen. We rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting our Heavenly Father, we bring Him our prayers and petitions. That the church and her people will serve God with love and reverence, especially during the season of Lent. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians everywhere who are being persecuted and killed for professing their beliefs, that God will protect and comfort them and that we will see an end to the violence throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young men and women among us today will be inspired to respond generously to God's call to the priesthood and religious life. And for Luke Meyerhoff in our parish as he discerns God's will, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we can work together with all people of good will to feed the hungry and shelter the homeless and that God will bring good out of this time of uncertainty surrounding the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, including Mary Lou Cook, Stan Gonzalez, husband of former Blessed Sacrament teacher Pam Gonzalez, may they rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who grant us by glorious healing remedies while still on earth to be partakers of the things of heaven, Guide us, we pray, through this present life, and bring us to that light in which you dwell, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruits of the vine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all of Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindly, that he, that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Abbaot, Plenis Ergelia Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei, Mortem Tuum, Annunciam Hustomine, Et Tuum Resurrectionem Confitemur, Domec Verias. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Carl our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion. O merciful Father, 
Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. ye salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, al Deus teacher. Pater Noster, qui es in genis, sanctifice tuur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicud in celo et in terra, panem nostrum cotidianum, da nobis odie, et imite nobis, Nebita nostra, sicud et nos demitibus, debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libram us Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord is now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On you stay, we told this peccatamundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, we told this peccatamundi, miserere nobis. On you stay. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall.
those who are watching at home, I invite you to pray with me at this moment the act of spiritual communion so that though you cannot be present with us at Mass, you may be able to receive the spiritual benefits of having Christ close to you. So the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I, cannot receive, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that, abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.